yes it started the recording yeah yes. okay uh, i'll start with my introduction first hi all i am uh, dr jyoti and today we have uh, uh, my digital guru on my channel baba ji and uh, we welcome him and uh, he is a great researcher in vedic astrology and has got uh, expertise in all the subjects in uh, vedic astrology and he is a great motivator i should say and he has got lot many <laughs> young fans on his channel then uh, baba ji uh, my first question to you is uh, kindly tell us about your first step in astrology how did you start uh this is like uh, for long back i used to read all these uh, scriptural books and the uh, different the different articles which i used to find from when i was very young it's almost around 2002 around that time 2002 or 3 from from that time uh and then i used to like as you know like when you are born in india then in indian homes you know always every month there is one festival <laughs> so some puja is there or some some navratri is there you know so some ashtami navami dashami always something or other is going on so when i used to uh, have these programs in my home then i used to ask that pandit or that pujari you know so many questions uh-huh. <laughs> okay uh, which they didn't used to like very much <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. i used to ask that you know what is all this what are you doing you know who what what's the ultimate aim of all the scriptures because i knew there are so many uh, scriptures in the vedic tradition like the vedas or the upanishads the puranas but uh, i was like what the hell is this man i mean <laughs> there there has to be a anchor point right mm-hmm. like uh, for example uh, everything has a point around which the things rotate no? like for example india rotates around the indian constitution so that's one example you know like iit indian institute of technology has a di- director so he is the one who decides what what, what are the things go you know he or she <laughs> so i know a lot of stuff but uh, i i was not aware of the conclusions you know like that that anchor point like uh, in shrimad bhagavatam it is said the universe uh, the, that anchor point is the pole star dhruva tara now in fifth canto it is vividly mentioned so if you read that section you will know it is you know kind of shape of a dolphin beautiful dolphin that is the place around which the entire universe you know rotates or revolves whatever you call it mm-hmm. so i used to read from my side and from 2002 and 3 i started uh, delving into the other religions like islam and christianity these two primarily and yet i ended up becoming more confused <laughs> than i was before i mean hinduism alone was enough of it to be confused <laughs> but then i added some more stuff into it from the other religions and yet i ended up becoming more confused and then later on from 2009 onwards uh, it became very much intense then i uh started reading core spiritual stuff you know and uh, delving away from all this you know so be good do good be nice you know mm-hmm. away from all this at a higher level of you know okay it's great to be good mm-hmm. <laughs> but ultimately goodness is not going to save you because <laughs> at the end of life when you die then a bad person also will die the same way a good person dies so there's much more to uh, Uh, goodness then it's you know at the superficial level so from 2009 it became very intense i remember towards the end of 2009 and then 2010 i went to chennai south india to srm university to do my bachelor studies in software engineering which wow. is very different from which is very different from computer science <laughs> for your kind information mm-hmm. and there when i went uh, <clears throat> that was the point where uh, things started materializing into something very concrete mm-hmm. that is the time where i met so many gurus mm-hmm. so many spiritual personalities mm-hmm. so many uh, people who were following uh, great things they were following different traditions and they were leading the best lives i had ever seen mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. because uh, my family upbringing is such my grandfather he was an is officer wow. is for those who do not know in i mean the westerners in india it's like you know the top level bureaucracy Correct. And my father also. My father also. He was a very senior level bureaucrat. He retired as the commissioner and secretary of government of India of Assam, of course. Yeah. So my upbringing was in such an environment for the first eighteen years of my life mm-hmm. that I have seen the cream of the society. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have seen anybody and everybody who a general Indian or anybody aspires to be. You know. Correct. 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 I have met with the best doctors, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have met with the best lawyers. I have had lunch. Of course, I didn't have. You know, it was my father, and you know, you just sneak into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and 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 the best part about uh, being a son of somebody like this is that when you meet them personally, you know, for example, they are not behaving like a chief minister or a. doctor or somebody they are just you know being themselves you know <laughs> so the point which i want to make is when they are behaving themselves like who they are inside as a person and not pretending to like they people think them to be so then you come to know who who they actually are inside you know and you can distinctly see if um, the achievements which they have had in the outer world you know in their profession has it actually give, given them some happiness inside mm-hmm. or is it just just to show, keep, keep in your drawing room yes mm-hmm. oh so many medals so many prizes have you, if you go to drawing room people you will see in the you know, drawing room there are so many medals mm-hmm. so that is something which i observed very clearly and i saw that people are lacking in that area Mm-hmm. In, in fact i still remember there's a big politician in assam because i'm from guwahati assam he came to our home and you know everything was so great and uh, we were having dinner that day and when we were having dinner he was just telling you know how how is he going to pull down his opponent in the next election <laughs> okay <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and that's perfectly fine i mean that's the game of politics is a game of numbers yeah. and in india also the election is about to kick in now <laughs> right, right. but my point which i want to make is that i'm not saying that uh, politicians are good or bad or elections are good or bad what i'm trying to say here is i saw in the cream of the society you either you take lawyers politicians or anybody even i have sat with film stars you know great singers okay. mm-hmm. <laughs> i have seen that there is a great disconnect between who they are inside and who they project themselves to be right maybe occupation hazards yeah it could be <laughs> <laughs> and i have seen that internally there is a deep sense of insecurity which these people have mm-hmm. and then parallelly as i said i used to read stuff from the gita of course then uh, i realized that there has to be more to life than you know just uh, this name fame popularity money status you know i have seen people going in bulletproof cars you know the big bureaucrats politicians mm-hmm. but yet the moment they are down <laughs> from the car they are still under threat anything can go wrong so the, these things motivated me to search something which is uh, beyond all the externals i used to feel that there has to be something in life which nobody can take away from you <laughs> irrespective of your circumstances because today you are today somebody may be married tomorrow something can happen and you, <laughs> you are not married anymore tomorrow you may have your your boss may fire you your you may go bankrupt or anything good can happen or anything most can happen anything can happen good or bad so my point is that there has to be something in life which is not dependent on these externals okay. there has to be something life can't be so bad <laughs> because when i say good or bad i mean to say that i have seen people uh, who are not having financial security they are unhappy i have seen people who are having financial security they are also unhappy they are unhappy because they are having this anxiety of maintaining that status yes. those who do not have money they have the anxiety of getting money 
and it expands everywhere not only with money you know like i know the once i was doing a consultation for a lady you know she was telling me that um, you know like during her school days and during her college days she used to be the most uh, beautiful girl in the in her school <laughs> plan in the college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she has uh, enjoyed a lot of uh, popularity you know, during okay. her school, uh, yeah. school and her college days. Mm -hmm. But then somehow uh, later on, when she went to do her masters, <laughs> then she realized that she may not be the <laughs> most beautiful girl uh, in that universe. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so now she has uh, a self-created status anxiety. Now, of mm -hmm. course. The funny thing is the people with whom she's doing masters has no idea of her past. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she's bringing that anxiety into the table that, you know, oh, what will people think of me? You know, there are so many beautiful ladies here. <laughs> the funny thing is nobody knows you. <clears throat> yeah, nobody knows that you were the most charming lady in the town or in the college those days. So how Try to project our past insecurities or you know pseudo securities as you call it into our present and to our future and we do it to our next generation also like I get parents telling that you know I want my son to be like this yeah. why not because he should be or because that is good because I could not do be like that mm -hmm. so I want to see my son or my daughter as a success story of my own failures <laughs> Yes, so that expands to all other areas, you know, any profession or anything inside your internal life also. So I always had this quest that uh, there should be much more to life than externals because externals will not save you one day. <laughs> As there's a famous song, you know, Nahi Nahi Rakshati. In that, say, in that they say that Panini grammar will not save you. I will leave it for the people who, is, who, who will watch this video to write in the comments where this is mentioned. <laughs> The Panini grammar, which is very important if somebody is learning Sanskrit, when all the Vedas and Upanishads, everything is written. But that famous song says that Panini grammar is not going to save you at the end. And then, then I'm thinking, how about English and German then? <laughs> Panini grammar, you know, on the basis of which everything is written in the Vedas, that is not going to save you. Mm. And then it is written, somebody else will save you. <laughs> Okay, so then uh, from 2009, it became very intense. And then 2010, I went to South India. And then I started reading uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam there. I met many spiritual personalities. And when you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, you actually understand what is going on. It is like that anchor point. Without that, without that the situation is like a person. My, my guru used to say, Without knowing the Srimad Bhagavatam, your situation is like, have you gone to a, like uh, in India, you know, when we were very small, then there used to be Mela. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. okay. It's not like the way it is here, you know, in Germany or in the US, maybe. It was like too much crowd is there. So imagine suddenly there's a family, you know, husband, wife and one child. And imagine suddenly that child uh, loses uh, he he thinks that I can't find my father I can't find my father suddenly I cannot see my mother suddenly out of nowhere his parents disappear mm -hmm. then what will be the situation of that child right. I mean, can we imagine the level of panic and horror this child will face he will run here he will run there mm -hmm. and maybe uh, just one hour before entering that mela, he was very concerned about what, how much marks he's going to get tomorrow as a result of his, you know, maths or science or English in those subjects. Maybe he was very concerned. Maybe he's also very concerned. Next week, my birthday is online. What gift my father will give me? He's very concerned. What will happen? Oh, this next week, I have this, you know, national talent search competition. Will I win a prize? He's concerned about so many things just one hour before the Mela. <laughs> but that time when he loses his father and mother, what happens? Nothing doing. <laughs> Maths, English, go to hell. Talent search, competition, everything is out. I 
<clears throat> I just need one thing now. I just need my father and my mother or my mother. <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> and can you imagine the level of despondency that you know small boy would be suffering from and the, with the eagerness with which he would be searching. You know? So my guru used to say, without having knowledge of the Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam, if you know these scriptures, you know, all the Das, Puranas, Upanishads, your situation is like that boy <laughs> who has lost his mother and father and now he is running. Have you seen people into spirituality? Today they will say, oh, maybe this works. Tomorrow they say, no, no, actually that works. You know, no, 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 I think this is good. Tomorrow they will say, no, 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 maybe that is better, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have, our situation also becomes like that, you know. We, we, are, we are just running where we will find. But suddenly when the child finds his father, he runs and he goes and embraces the father or the mother. And then he realizes that life is good again. <laughs> <laughs> Back. Right. <laughs> Then, then maybe tomorrow morning again he starts thinking oh yes now that I have my father and my mother what is going to happen in my exam but that time when he was running he was not thinking about this so that is how the great spiritual seekers they they describe that this is how our spiritual quest should be that when you are not having knowledge of God your situation is exactly like that boy <laughs> You may have so many other things. Right. And maybe your you meet your school teacher in that mail and that teacher says, My dear my dear child, you know, tomorrow you are getting hundred out of hundred in the exam. You know? Or maybe if you are a bit young, you know, you go and say, I love you to a girl, and then she says, Yes, great, I also love you too. But that time he's not thinking of all this. No, no. You know? That exact that same feeling we should have. If that feeling is not there, what happens is we have a lot of security in this material world. Yeah. Okay, you know, things are bad. It's fine. But still, you know, there are so many things I can count on in this world. So that, that pseudo or that fake security, that stops us from going towards God. And that is what the great uh, spiritual people, they always have said, you know, that uh, we are actually beggars. We do not have anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it takes a long time to realize this. And the problem is the moment you realize this, it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before they say, before uh, God takes things away from you, you should only go and surrender and, you know, say, okay, this is yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then when I went to South India from 2010, uh, I started reading the Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam and there, were, there was a big community of uh, spiritually uh, very potent people mm -hmm. and there were many seniors in my university only, SRM University. There were people in my second year, third year, fourth year and some people in the M-Tech also mm -hmm. and they used to stay together. They were in a spiritual center. And then I stayed my first year in engineering in my hostel. <laughs> and uh, my hostel life was uh, very unique because due to some reason I had uh, reached late to the university. And because of that, I did not get a place in the hostel. And I had to stay in staff quarters. Staff quarters is the place where the teachers stay. But they had two buildings, building A and building B distinct there in the university <laughs> and in the a block they said we will put all these late comers the students and in the b block the existing uh, staff used to stay and then the staff quarters was a very peculiar place they, they were all three bhk buildings and so that means uh, in one uh, one building there uh, one one apartment there used to be 12 people because there were like three, four halls, you know, rooms. So every room, three, three students used to stay. There were three, three beds. So there were around nine to 12 people in every apartment like that. And uh, there was like no, uh, there was no privacy or anything like that. <laughs> Everything is like open. <laughs> and uh, when I was staying there, then there were many people from different parts of India, like three, four from South and the remaining from North India. And uh, I don't know, I would call it a blessing of God. There were so many 
extremes which I had seen in that place. Like uh, I had never ever ever imagined in last eighteen years of my life that. Uh, I will see such things in my life. <laughs> like, for example, one of my uh, friends who was staying there, he he was the head of head of the entire drugs society. He was a very severe drug addict. There was like you. I bet you have not seen anybody like him because I have not seen him. <laughs> anybody like him? It's like uh, he. He was like extreme of all sorts, and there were people who were from all kind of. They had all kind of bad habits, you know, starting from drinking, from smoking, to even uh, visiting prostitutes. Some of them, you know, and then I, I can't speak more. <laughs> but <laughs> so that was an uh, that was a very unique experience, and then you know, playing music uh, till six a.m. in the morning. <laughs> So it was very difficult for me to sleep there, and finally, then uh, I decided that I will not be staying in the hostels because most of the most of the population is uh, <laughs> was moving towards that same zone. You know, all, almost all of my friends. So then I told my seniors that I don't wish to stay here because if I stay, then I will also pollute my consciousness mm -hmm. because you become who you associate with, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So if you, I realize that if you want to safeguard your spiritual journey, then you must stay with the right people. Right. You chant, you chant a million mantras, it is useless. Mm. You read thousand scriptures, it is useless. Mm. You do this, you know, karva chod, you do navratri vrat, you do janmashtami vrat, whatever you do, I don't care. Mm. If you are not with the right people. It will hardly give you any benefit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you are with the right people, maybe you don't do that much. <laughs> but the result is like, it's stupendous. You know? It's like, you can't believe it. You, you will be shocked and you'll be surprised. Am I the same person? <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you will not believe yourself. You will think that maybe there's some magic which has happened. Well, there's no magic. The simple thing is that you have stayed with uh, great personalities and their greatness has changed you. It is not that by your progress you have changed. It is sometimes people say, you know, oh, I gave up this bad habit, you know, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that we have done it. You know, yes, we we have definitely put efforts, and that's great. But that doesn't mean that uh, because of our efforts only we have achieved uh, success in our spiritual journey. Maybe in our material journey, it happens. <clears throat> I've seen people studying 20 hours for competitive exams. You know? And by that, maybe you get success in the, sp in the materialistic society. You know? Just slogging 24 hours a day and you get success maybe. But in the spiritual arena, it doesn't happen like this. It is that in spirituality, there are no rules. <laughs> because spiritual progress is not obtained it is awarded you cannot you cannot demand spiritual progress from god if he wants he will give you if he doesn't he may not <laughs> and when you stay with great souls and you know you you share a burden of their own responsibilities mm -hmm. which means you also <clears throat> identify their life goals and you also try to help them you know for example, my seniors, they, they were, you know, spreading the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita in my hostels. So then when I came to my second year, then I also started doing. So that's like sharing a part of the burden. <laughs> and then when you do that, gradually you see, you know, as uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Vasudeve uh, Bhakti, that Bhagavati Akinchana Sarva Gunes Tatra Samasate Sura, all the beautiful qualities of the demigods you know all the beautiful qualities people which people keep searching for you know like truthfulness you know being clean you know being tolerant being humble being merciful all the good qualities which krishna also says in the gita 26 good qualities they will gradually start manifesting in you you don't have to externally do something you know it will automatically happen mm -hmm. so this happens when you share the burden of the great souls and that is how my spiritual journey uh, started from there 
and yes uh, in 2015 i came to germany uh, for doing my masters here and yeah and in 2017 exactly 2 years back march i had opened uh, my channel exotic astrology and yeah uh, that is how it has been <laughs> right right have to have made notes as well so that if i can refer my notes <laughs> okay thank you baba jeet now today's uh, topic what we have decided is we'll talk uh, something on nakshatras the entire thing is up to you now you have to start you have to end yeah so nakshatras is something which is very special which is there in the vedic tradition it is also there to some extent in the western philosophy also but to to a large extent it is still centric to the knowledge of the vedas and scriptures so therefore it's very essential to learn the nakshatras not just because they are parts of the zodiac that's not the reason <laughs> main reason is nakshatras every nakshatra has a story but that is also not the main reason the main reason is that every nakshatra gives a flavor of certain spiritual uh, certain aspects which the scriptures talk about so for example people say that oh there are vedas there are upanishads and there is mahabharat but there is a difference between all of these <laughs> many people don't know this they just think that vedas and upanishads are the same so what are the vedas basically the vedas deal about four issues you know dharma artha kama moksha dharma is uh, loosely translated as religion and religious principles and your duty then artha is money financial prosperity and then kama is desire that which is under the regulation of the scriptures mm-hmm. and not outside and then moksha is liberation or trying to obtain salvation you know freedom from materialistic desire and cultivation of spiritual knowledge many people think moksha is just you know become desireless become like a some some nobody you know it's not like that moksha means uh, you moksha doesn't mean that you kill your kill your desires because a soul can never be desireless it is not possible okay. the symptom of a soul is it has desire mm-hmm. but moksha means to end your material desires and cultivate spiritual desires <laughs> that's the problem with people they will just try to get rid of material desires mm-hmm. but they will not cultivate spiritual desires so because of that moksha becomes like a burden mm-hmm. why people do not like this word moksha because that is inherently something which the soul is not if you say somebody become desireless the person will think how can i become desireless <laughs> because to not have the desire to not have any desire is still a desire <laughs> so if you tell them that uh, you don't have to be desireless you have to channelize your material desires towards spiritual desires then moksha becomes easy so that is what <clears throat> the vedas talk and the vedas uh, they are basically what like for example if any foreigner from you know, uh, germany or uh, russia or uk or us suppose they go to india and attend a indian wedding suddenly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so whatever they see in the wedding is basically indian culture basically to summarize so that's what the vedas is so all the things which you keep hearing in india from childhood you know do oh, get married do this do that ye nahi karoge log kya kahenge ye ho gaya wo ho gaya all the all the things which you keep hearing from the mouth of indians that is basically what the vedas are and the vedas glorify family life married life you know very much they say oh you should be uh, very committed to your husband you should be committed to your wife you should be committed to your parents matri devo bhava pitri devo bhava all these things are there the importance of material stability is stressed again and again and again and again in the vedas it is stressed very much mm-hmm. and then it it has religious practices inside like for example uh, to have good progeny good children who mm-hmm. uh, will also elevate you spiritually and themselves also practice there is this uh, garbhadan sanskar which is there which is a 
uh, set of rituals which is practiced uh, when uh, the man and the woman they are uniting when they are deciding to have a kid so that is one example then you know there is marriage you know, lifelong commitment to one person mm -hmm. then so many other things are there so material stability is very much stressed in the vedas okay. you know, and having a profession having good income being responsible in your career etc so these are the things with the vedas talk vedas do not talk much about spirituality it talks but not that much <laughs> so if somebody reads the vedas and it's, they, they may be wondering oh where, where is the spiritual stuff here <laughs> it's talking about uh, putra kameshti yagya how to get a child you know or if you are not getting married then do this yagya do that yagya now i mean that has nothing to do with our spirituality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are all stuff from the Vedas. Mm -hmm. And then you come to the Upanishads, 108. Mm -hmm. Upanishads are directly the extreme. Mm -hmm. Upanishads are, oh, you are getting married, you are simply wasting your life, you will, you will die. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why are you wasting time getting married? Just go to the forest. You, know, you will get nothing by getting married. You will get married, these people will take you they will rob your money and you're finished your spiritual life extinguished don't waste your time getting married mm -hmm. don't run after money don't run after this don't run after the opposite sex you will not get anything mm -hmm. these are that is why the upanishads are very they, they say that the upanishads focus on detachment okay yeah you know? so all the things in the indian culture that you have seen you know be detached, be this, be that. These are all from the Upanishads. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> now, of course, in the in in the uh, at a generic level, you will not see the stuff of the Upanishads much because most of the people are householders, ninety nine percent. So for the for the householders, they cannot uh, apply the teachings of the Upanishads at a very at a very literal level. Because they have a lot of responsibilities. <laughs> but for the rest, 1% or 5% who are celibates, you know, who are sannyasis, who are brahmacharis, for them, the Upanishads, they are like the cream. <laughs> so for them, they the Upanishads contain different topics which they will read, you know, about God, about spirituality, about Atma, about things which are beyond the bodily realm, which the Vedas do not stress much. So once you read the Upanishads, that is what you will realize. Mm -hmm. And the Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, which is spoken by Lord Krishna to Arjuna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, is the culmination of all the Upanishads. Because that famous sloka is there, no? Sarvo Upanishado Gavo Dogda Gopala Nandano. That uh, the Bhagavad Gita is like that cow you know <laughs> which has all the knowledge the milk of all the Upanishads so basically if somebody says I want to read all the Upanishads well I would say maybe you will die before finishing it's impossible mm -hmm. to read the 108 Upanishads mm -hmm. so the good news is the bad news is you may expire before you complete but the good news is you don't even need, need to start reading the Upanishads mm -hmm. the good news is you can just read the Gita that is only having 700 verses so by that you will <coughs> know all the things which are there in the Upanishads you may not know it at a literal level but you will know the conclusion because the conclusion of the Upanishads is that you are a soul you are not the body mm -hmm. that is how the Upanishads will gradually take you into progression and that's what Krishna says in the first place to Arjuna no? oh Arjuna you are lamenting that you will kill Bhishma and Drona but uh, hey, they are not these bodies, you know, they are spirit souls, so they will never die. And if you say that they are bodies, then they are anyways going to die one day. If you don't kill them, then I will kill them through somebody else, or they will just die. <laughs> Death will come one day. Bhishma Pitama has Ichan Mitya, which means he can die whenever he wants, but he will still die. <laughs> <laughs> He has a freedom to die how, where he wants, but he doesn't have the freedom to die or not. And Dronacharya, he, nobody can defeat him. Even the demigods, the Indra and his entire army cannot fight against Dronacharya. But irrespective of that, even if he's a disciple of the great Parshuram, he will still die one day. <laughs> so my dear Arjuna, 
if you think that by you not fighting and you not killing they will not die then <laughs> you are misinformed <laughs> and if you think that they are spirit souls then the good news is they will never die <laughs> so you can never kill them nayanam chindanti shastrani that shloka is there na you cannot kill the soul you cannot burn it you cannot cut the soul <laughs> so arjuna became relaxed after uh, hearing the gita i mean in the beginning itself because he realized that i cannot kill the soul and the body anyways will die even if i don't <laughs> let me kill them <laughs> yeah krishna said uh, i can just take my sudarshan chakra and i can kill all of these i can do that in a flick of a second but i don't want to do that i want to give you the credit mm-hmm. so this is what the upanishads are and this is what the vedas uh, teach as i said earlier and this is what the gita is so the nakshatras have a unique uh, story have a unique flavor you know so they represent different areas of uh, the scriptures so if you want to know what the nakshatras are then you must know the stories which are behind the nakshatras okay. and when certain planets will transit these nakshatras or in your birth chart if you have too many planets in one particular nakshatra mm-hmm. then you will always realize that that story or that theme from the scriptures that lesson you know that is being reinstantiated in your life again and again and again that is happening again <laughs> okay so uh, the nakshatras have to be studied very scrutinizingly and the stories is associated so that you can actually know see for example in the scriptures if you study there are so many stories are there i am not talking of stories related to nakshatras but in general there are so many stories right why everybody can just write lines na sutras okay mm-hmm. like if you take the mahabharat in summary what's the conclusion that don't use divisive you know means to pull down somebody like duryodhana did what happened at the end he only perished so vyasadev could have just wrote a statement you know if you do bad bad will happen to you mm-hmm. just wrote it five lines mahabharat is finished mm-hmm. so the problem is nobody understands mm-hmm. <laughs> so he has to write you know this big book and it's so bigger it than iliad and it's bigger than iliad and odyssey combined they say the mahabharat is so big you know that's the name maha means very big so that is why the mahabharat is written down it is one of the uh, itihasas as they call mm-hmm. in the mahabharat you will find all different topics mm-hmm. which which you will find in modern day cinema you know movies mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever you need is there you know starting from politics starting from gossip starting from all the topics you you can just take so whenever a normal human being normal person when he hears about the mahabharat he is very much interested always <laughs> yes i guess that was a problem Okay. Yeah, so I was telling about the Mahabharat that if you tell a general normal person that you know you should go and read the Vedas or the Upanishads, then the person will not be very much interested. Mm-hmm. But if you tell him, and oh, you know there was this great king Shantanu once upon a time. He was fascinated by a lady. Mm-hmm. Her name was Ah. Then she was. He was fascinated again by another lady. <laughs> Her name was Satyavati. Then and. Okay, he was a man like me. He was also fascinated. Okay, what is next? Mm-hmm. What's next? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, there was a great son who was Devgrath, and then you were like, oh, and then this Lady Ganga, she goes and throws all her uh, kids into the water. Mm-hmm. Man, when he hears, he's like, oh, what? That's how that's possible, and how can a mother throw her own? 
into the water you know that's insane <laughs> mm -hmm. then there's a long story and then they will say you know that oh then now you know vichitra virya is born chitranga is born and then suddenly they will die you know the suspense and then the throne is empty nobody is in the throne mm -hmm. you took the vow but now you must sit nobody is there and mm -hmm. this person no i will not sit you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. what to do? there's a lot of suspense there. everybody is looking what's going to happen next who will sit on the throne next mm -hmm. everybody is now concerned who is going to be the next prime minister again mm -hmm. in the modi or somebody else so a normal person will be will, will be very much interested in the mahabharat so mm -hmm. uh, so now what happens is when he will read the mahabharat somewhere deep down inside um, he will get spiritual uh, up because there are so much discussion about spirituality in the, in the mahabharat also there are so many shlokas he will see he will read he will hear conversations of yudhishthir maharaj with the great sages then he will also obtain elevation so the uh, these stories like the ramayana and the mahabharat they they give you spirituality in indirect form mm -hmm. <laughs> don't like to accept it readily most of the times so then they are explained using stories like yeah. for example the famous past time of uh, draupadi vastra where she is you know, trying to <laughs> okay so what is the lesson of that that if you try to violate the chastity of a lady then punish very severely you will die very badly at the end that's what happened to all of those who had tried to insult her but now if you say this directly people do not understand <laughs> then you explain you a story you know see you <laughs> this like that happened mm -hmm. then later on maybe the um, uh, if somebody is a bit sane who has some level of common sense understand that okay guys okay, should not do like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah and the nakshatras will uh, give a huge favor mm -hmm. they will also highlight but the purpose of uh, these stories is not just to learn mm -hmm. there are many people who say you know you learn the stories of nakshatras but the most important thing is to learn the lesson right so the story if you know is good but you have to know the lesson and also it is very important that when you are learning nakshatras you you need to have a good knowledge of the to all all the stories in the scriptures and the lesson of all this, all the nakshatras all the stories so which means suppose somebody has like for example there are nine planets and the ascendant will be in the nakshatra so at max you can have 10 nakshatras at max affecting you directly so suppose somebody does not have anything in uh, for example pushya nakshatra for example so then uh, there is a tendency that that person will not study about pushya <laughs> <laughs> anyways i don't have mars venus saturn rahu ketu or ascendant in pushya so pushya is not important for me mm -hmm. i don't need <laughs> well, but you always have the sign cancer in some house <laughs> <laughs> you cannot take cancer out from your house so it's not possible not possible so every nakshatra every energy every lesson vibrating in your life but the house where planets the nakshatras where particular planets are situated those lessons will be actively in this life that is the only okay not okay. if you are not having uh, for example now jupiter has entered mula nakshatra till 22nd april somebody may say oh anyway you know it's not important for me after all i don't mm -hmm. have anything in you <laughs> but mula is always there either jupiter transit or he doesn't it was it is and it will always be there so <clears throat> you have to know the holistic essence of the scriptures which means that to to learn the lessons from the story, you have to understand the mood of the entire scriptures if you do not know the mood 
then you will just uh, study them individually. Mm -hmm. That's what people do these days. They go to YouTube, they will search maybe Keshtana Then they will see, oh, there is a story related to Indra. You know, Indra did something wrong and later on he was punished. That's it. End of the story. So it doesn't work like that. You have to know why Indra did that. Mm -hmm. What are the record questions it says? And what's the history? What's the background of that nakshatra? Mm -hmm. Why at all why at all Indra did that? Mm -hmm. Could have done something else. Mm -hmm. And you have to see how how you also behave like him sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like for example, Jaisna uh, has this story of Indra, you know, and Indra and Krishna he lifted the Govardhan mountain, known as the Govardhan Leela. What actually happened? Someday Indra had so many, uh, Indra get so many praises from all around the entire universe, but. Suddenly one day, one of his servants comes to him and says, you know in North India, Uttar Pradesh district, Mathura, there is a place called Ravan. <laughs> and there is a small village there. And they have said that we will not offer oblations to Indra. <laughs> and Indra is like, what? How dare they sell it? They must offer oblations to Indra. Otherwise, I will ruin that. Movie. Now, use, use some of the common sense. Mm -hmm. Then I is the he's like the king of you know the heaven. Mm -hmm. And if you read the description of the heavenly planets and you compare the earthly stuff, you realize what it is. Mm -hmm. And he has so much. It's like. You cannot even get that in thousand lifetimes, even if you uh, stay as the president of any country or the king. You can never even get 1% of what he has. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to get bogged by a small, tiny village somewhere in India? Why? That, that shows our tendency. Mm -hmm. Everything is fine in, the, in our life sometimes. Everything is going great. We are with the best people. We are at the peak of our financial success, career, name, fame, status. And someday, suddenly, some small thing happens and we get bogged up so much. Mm -hmm. So just knowing that Indra did this is not enough. You have to see consciously when you behaved like Indra, when in your life, unless you do that, the lesson of the nakshatras will not do much justice to your time. <laughs> so you will have to, for example, in the story of Vishnu Nakshatra, uh, it's mentioned about uh, Indra and uh, Devi Ahalya, you know, that they had indulged in physical union. And because of that, both of them are very severely punished. Now, how do you uh, link that to your life? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to link it like this, for example. Now, what happened was, uh, Gautam Rishi was uh, there and he went out for some time. And then Ahelia was inside the home. And Indra, he always uh, wanted to, you know, enjoy with Ahilya because, you know, she was very famous and she was very beautiful in the entire three worlds. He always used to hear. And Ahilya is a very extraordinary lady. She's not like any ordinary you know, lady now. She's extraordinary. If you know who Ahilya is. And then what happened? Indra changed his form into Ahilya's husband. <laughs> and then came and he stood in front of Ahilya and it is said in the scriptures, the moment, see Ahilya as I said, she is not an ordinary lady, the moment she saw Indra, she understood, he is not my husband, <laughs> because she was so powerful, you know, she had that penance and she could see directly, the moment she saw, she understood, he is Indra, he is not my husband. <laughs> <laughs> And Indra was exactly you know, looks-wise and personality-wise behavior. She was exactly behaving like 
her husband but still understood <laughs> he is not my husband he is somebody else and she also understood that he is indra <laughs> mm -hmm. and indra also came to know that she has uh, come to know who i am that i am not her husband <laughs> like, uh, two smart people there <laughs> And then Indra gave the proposal that uh, I want to enjoy with you. <laughs> now, 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 uh, somebody may say that okay, you know, Indra was maybe he was just looking like Gautam Rishi, but no, <laughs> you know, when the king of the heavens, you know, when he decides to <laughs> seduce somebody, <laughs> it is very difficult to resist that temptation. And Ahilya knew that uh, he's not my husband, but then she also gave into that temptation. And then later on, when uh, Indra came out after enjoying with her, then suddenly that's what happens again. Gautam Rishi came there. <laughs> so this is also something which happens. You know, we do something, we sneak through sometimes in certain areas of our life. And then we get exposed many a times. So that, that's not in matters of the opposite sex. It could be in any area, you know, financially or any way. You know. <laughs> so that, that is a very big lesson. And then uh, he was cursed by Gautam Ishi very badly. And they suffered, my God. So th that's the lesson that if he suffered, then if I do such things, then I will also suffer. You know? mm -hmm. Why in the you uh, go and try to break another family? Mm -hmm. Why should you approach a woman who is already married? Why should you try to seduce her? Why should you try to uh, violate her? Why should you try to do this? Why can't you be satisfied? You have so many uh, <laughs> apsaras there. You could be happy there. Mm -hmm. But no, you always want something more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That same thing which destroyed Ravana also destroyed Indra, you know. Ravana had so much. You know, he had an amazing wife like Mandodri, he had Dhanya Malini and if you read the Ramayana, you will see that when Hanumanji goes to Lanka, he sees Ravana there. You know? He's lying in his palace in that in his beautiful bed. And he sees so many, so many ladies are there, you know, they are just like his servants waiting to serve him any possible way. <laughs> Hanuman that, you know, I don't know, I think I have come to a wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Hanuman Ji is a Brahmachari and he is not, you know, <laughs> he is expected to not see, you know, the women scantily dressed. And he, he, he describes really what all things he saw. So, what are the things which Ravana had? You know, no ever, no man could ever even dream of having all those things. <laughs> but that desire, I want something more. This is not enough. You know? I, want still, I want more and more and more and more and more. And that is why he decided that I will go and kidnap Sita. And not that his, uh, not that his uh, family members did not warn him. In fact, if you read the Ramayana, you will know that uh, when Kumbhakar and his brother to sleep for six months, mm -hmm. he had forcefully woken him up to fight against Ram. Mm -hmm. Then Kumbhakar wakes up and he says, "Ravana, my dear elder brother, you're such a fool." <laughs> You're such a fool I have not seen in, in the entire universe. You know, you're the biggest fool I have seen. Mm -hmm. Umkaran makes a statement which is very important. Mm -hmm. He says that there are four principles Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Mm -hmm. Whenever you try to get Kama without Dharma, you will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. so for example, you you wanted to enjoy, so maybe you married, you married Mandodri, but you married her through dharma, through marriage, through yeah. agni, through prayer. Mm -hmm. So, you had a very happy married life. You were the king of the entire world, you know. Nobody could even dare to challenge you. Mm -hmm. But this time, when you have abducted Sita, you have broken dharma there. 
that is why this karma will destroy you and your entire race so whenever yes. you want pleasure without responsibility you must suffer <laughs> so yes so if somebody says i want pleasure somebody says that you know oh i want to enjoy with the opposite sex i want to have a good time well you also need to take responsibility you you need to marry and you know and after that you can enjoy before that if you try well your situation will be like what happened to ravana right <laughs> and yes after, after you are married then you are putting your eyes on somebody else then uh, you will end up in the same place <laughs> so that is what the nakshatras uh, are you know you have to you have to know the story of each and every nakshatra then you have to know the lesson and you have to sit down and you have to analyze maybe next day morning you can do it take the story of every nakshatra and try to see when because see again as i said all the nakshatra are playing out in your life either you have a planet there or you don't it doesn't matter so you have to see in which area of your life where you behaving like them Okay. Yes. So, Baba, Baba Ji, I have a question here. It means yes. uh, you mean these particular stories associated with these nakshatras they affect our uh, different areas of our life, right? But we do have different different planets in uh, different nakshatras, and different planets are behaving differently in different nakshatras, right? Yes. Then you want yeah, to. So the thing. as i said the wherever the planets are placed they represent very strong karmic influences there mm -hmm. so suppose you have a planet like uh, for example you have a sun in swati nakshatra for example then swati is about independence so that then you will see that that desire to be independent in this world is very strongly manifesting in the areas of the sun sun is what sun is your uh sun i say is the planet of kingship everybody is a king in this world to some extent <laughs> like i am the king of uh, this room you know i have this mic i have this laptop if i want i keep it or else i do it <laughs> i can exercise my control over this laptop and nobody can question me yeah Now, i may not be able to exercise my uh, authority over the country that i cannot do that <laughs> so the president or the prime minister is also a king but his or her jurisdiction is large so that's what the sun is the degree to which you uh, feel that you are a king so suppose we have sun in swati so regarding the areas of sun the nakshatra swati will play out much more strongly but that does not mean that uh suppose you do not have any planet in vishakha which is also an nakshatra which is there in libra and you know scorpio it does not mean that uh, it will not have any effect in your life <laughs> the energy vishakha will also play out in your life so that is why i said you need to sit down and you need to make a list of uh, the nakshatra and then you should try to link it with your own life <laughs> which means for example like the story of jeshtha nakshatra i said when are the times that uh, you try to behave like indra <laughs> when are those times when you knew that this is not supposed to be done but still you did it how many times have you when did you do it then the next step is you should see the the horoscope is fine astrology is fine you have your sun you have your moon your venus everything is fine it's perfectly fine but sometimes you cannot just superficially link nakshatras to the planets like this for example suppose somebody has you know uh venus suppose in rohini nakshatra for example then you cannot make a judgment like that that maybe the people who i meet the members of the opposite sex you know because venus represents the opposite sex they will behave like rohini no you cannot make a judgment like that okay so the best thing the best the best way to study nakshatra is know your horoscope you keep it aside for some time then you study you even don't think of which nakshatras your planets are in forget okay. that you do not know astrology for some time just forget it 
mm-hmm. and try to link all the nakshatras with your practical areas of your life as a human being of 20 years 30 years okay and after that after that what you should do is <coughs> you should try to see to what extent it is resonating with your horoscope okay so for example suppose somebody has you know moon in a partic- particular nakshatra so mm-hmm. suppose somebody has moon in jesta for example then it could happen that you break the rules like in india but that is more uh, not more for you know sensual gratification it's more for emotional comfort that is how it could play out <laughs> but this is in jesta then maybe you play these games for you know sensual pleasures <laughs> it is the same <laughs> the game everything is same but your purpose is different <laughs> not happy in your married life and so you want some emotional comfort you know so you think oh maybe i should go around with somebody else you know? mm-hmm. but if venus is there it could happen that uh, you want pleasure you, know, you just want fun and you know, because of that you are doing it. it would happen so the next step is we should try to resolve our practical events of our life which we think is falling to any category of nakshatras mm-hmm. with our existence okay and then by that we will uh, come to know for example i have seen uh, if somebody has too many planets in shravan nakshatra i have seen it falls in capricorn mm-hmm. then and if there are afflictions or you know like there are difficulties in that nakshatra for example then mm-hmm. what happens i have seen that these people they will make big promises but they will not deliver Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shravan Nakshatra is about you know uh, taking resolution, taking resolution. For example, Bali Maharaj. Again, that's true. Mm-hmm. Bali Maharaj said, you know, I will give three steps of land to Baba Dev. But he he ensured that he gives three steps of land. But if uh, there are malefics sitting there in Shravan, mm-hmm. or if there are benefics but afflicted by malefics. Mm-hmm. and it can happen that uh, even though you take from vows or you make promises you do not fulfill them mm-hmm. <laughs> this is associated with the arudha lagna then maybe this gives you defame okay okay mm-hmm. maybe this is associated with the upapada lagna this breaks your marriage you mm-hmm. say something you the opposite Then the spouse says, "I will leave you." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is how you have to do. But that's a later stage. <laughs> First, you have to forget that you know astrology. You forget that you know planets. You forget okay. that you know it. Okay. Just yourself. Know the nakshatras. First step. Second step is you have to see where did you behave. Longer. Then third is you have to try to resonate with your horoscope. Okay. But the problem is people do the opposite. Yeah, going retro it means right. Yeah, people what they will do, they will see the nakshatras, they will see the planets. Okay, my, my Venus is here, so maybe my girlfriend or wife will be like this. Then they will start searching. You know, okay, what does Venus in Mula mean? What does Venus in Shravan mean? No, it doesn't work like that. Venus may represent your spouse, but Venus is also what? What if you are a Capricorn lagna and it's and it's the tenth lord? Mm-hmm. then what then what do you say venus will represent my boss yes it could mm-hmm. <laughs> yes so that is one that that's the next step so and the final step is you have to apply them dynamically in your dashas okay mm-hmm. which means you may have so many planets so many so many nakshatras or you may not have planets in a particular nakshatra but what if the dasha of a particular planet is active mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for example and nakshatras have planetary lords as we know right yes so i was talking of jeshta nakshatra so for example suppose somebody does not have any planet in jeshta nakshatra okay okay but suppose the person is running mercury's antar dasha okay 
then for some time the J star traits will be active. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. In which house that is, it will depend on the external areas because of which that traits have become activated. Mm -hmm. so, happening in your seventh house, then people ask that okay, nakshatras have different stories. How do you know which is linked to our life? Mm -hmm. Well, one very easy way is to see the house where the nakshatra is falling. Okay, so, right. Example of Jeshta, for example, Jeshta has traits like uh, seducing others or competition. This is another. So, if Jeshta is linked with the sixth house, you know it's something to do with competition. Mm -hmm. If the house is coming into picture, maybe there is some seduction going on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or if it is the tenth house, you want to maintain your position by crushing others down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because of that, you suffer. Mm -hmm. wrong. You know, so this this is how uh, this is how it happens, and I have seen. So, for example, let's talk of Shravan Nakshatra. I have seen when Shravan Nakshatra is associated with Venus or the seventh house or seventh lord. I always warn them mm -hmm. that unless you are very sure, <laughs> mm -hmm. don't give a word to anybody regarding marriage. Like in India, there is this tradition, you know, Zuban de diya humne. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I've given my word, you know, now I will have to marry that person or, or some, something like that. So it can happen that some people say that, okay, you know, sir, we want to fix our engagement now and next year we will marry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if I see Shravan is there in the seventh house related to the seventh lord and if Venus is also there in, and if there are afflictions and then I say, no, sir. Today you are engaged, tomorrow you get married. Otherwise, no engagement. <laughs> mm -hmm. You cannot keep hang things hanging in the air, dangling in between. That's not recommended. Ravan is afflicted. Okay. Now that will have a specific dynamics related to the seventh house. Mm -hmm. And then dashas are always there. The dashas will always, you know, alternate the results and, you know, they will try to change the flavor of what is going on because dasha lord is like god he decides what goes on in your life so and that is what i would say and primarily the ascendant nakshatra and the nakshatra of sun moon and the lord of the ascendant these four are the most important nakshatras in your life. right right so these four nakshatras will always resonate with you in some level or the other Okay. <laughs> so now there is a debate which is more important the nakshatra of moon or the ascendant nakshatra? Yeah. <laughs> debate, is, debate is useless because both are important. Okay. <laughs> the problem is we have learned, you know, in science in our school <laughs> that, you know, H2O. So if water has to be formed, there has to be two hydrogen and one oxygen. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, water cannot be formed. Maybe H2O2, O3, something else. <laughs> we try to apply that same concept when it comes to astrology. Okay, okay, tell me yes or no. This is more important. That is more important. No, it doesn't work like that. Both are important. The ascendant nakshatra is also important. The nakshatra of the moon is also important. Mm -hmm. Moon's nakshatra will tell you. Um, how the society affects you or your mind that is what the nakshatra of the moon will tell because they say that moon represents the mind but actually what is the mind mind represents uh, your thoughts right your thought process and the society with whom you stay always uh, modifies your thought process correct right Mm -hmm. Yes. So suppose they say if uh, moon is afflicted in somebody's chart, it's with Saturn or Rahu or something like that. Now again, I'm not making a statement, but uh, generic sense I'm saying. Mm -hmm. see that this is a combination for depression. Why do they say that? Did you ever think of this? Mm -hmm. Because maybe you are surrounded by idiots all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You, you are, I've seen moon and Saturn people. Always surrounded by people who are gossiping. Because see, a person who is gossiping with you about somebody 
will also gossip about you with somebody else. Right. This you have mentioned in one of your videos also. I still remember. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is that when moon is afflicted in somebody's chart, the first thing we should do is we should make sure that because moon is the society, always remember that. Okay. Mm -hmm. We should always make sure that we put ourselves in company of good people. Half okay. of the problem is solved there. Right. Rather than so many mantras and remedies that which we definitely have to do I am not undermining the effect of mantras here mm -hmm. what I am saying is, at a practical level you have to make sure that you are not surrounded by you know, <laughs> people who are always pulling you down people right. who are always you to a competition mm -hmm. like I have seen people uh, when I was working in Cape Gemini in 2014 okay yeah. Then when I said that uh, I'm coming to Germany for masters, then some people were asking me, oh, why are you going to Germany? Mm -hmm. Why don't you go to UK? Why don't you go to Australia? Why don't you go here? Why don't you go there? Mm -hmm. Why can't you just let me go to Germany? <laughs> mm, right. What, what is your problem? I mean, if there will be some problem, I will suffer. I'm not telling you that you have to pay for me. Mm -hmm. What is your problem? Why can't you just uh, sit and be somebody, let, let be themselves? Mm -hmm. That is what which many people uh, cannot do. And this is not with education or career. This is with everything I have seen. Mm -hmm. like, for example, uh, I was uh, talking to a lady from India, elderly mm -hmm. lady. So she uh, found a girl for her uh, boy you know, to get married. Okay. Fine. match the horoscopes of the boy and the girl everything is fine great mm -hmm. but uh, she has an afflicted moon in her chart this lady okay because of that what happened she said no actually mr kalita whenever i bring any girl you know for my boy then my relatives will say you know she's not good in this area she's bad in that area this mm -hmm. is not good with her that's not good some problem or the other they will find and they will say that you should reject this girl. This mm -hmm. girl is not good for your body. Mm -hmm. I said, well, then the first thing you must do is you, you should uh, cut off these people from your life. Otherwise, then your your son will never be married. <laughs> right. If you are searching for the perfect girl, uh, you, you, you will never find because she doesn't exist. <laughs> so... Yes. So that's the thing. You have to make sure you are not surrounded by people who are doing uh, doing things to put down or people who cannot digest your success. Right. People who do not uplift you. So the moon's nakshatra will have flavors of the society. Moon's nakshatra can show which type of gossips you like very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of things, uh, see, I say moon is the, as I said, you know, sun represents our kingdom. Mm -hmm. But moon represents, how do you feel about your kingdom? Okay. That is why it is more important than the sun. Why do they say moon is more important than sun? Mm -hmm. And for men and for women, both. <laughs> Uh, okay, Babaji, moon For is... example, if, if sun, sun represents your kingdom, suppose you have a big kingdom, you know, you are the prime minister of a country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But suppose moon is spoiled, mm -hmm. then you will feel that you are like a beggar. You do not have anything in life. But suppose your sun is not very well placed or there are some issues with the ascendant or something like that, then maybe your kingdom is not that great. Mm -hmm. Got big in size and influence, mm -hmm. but suppose your moon is very well placed, or so the fourth house is good, then you will be very happy in life, mm -hmm. irrespective of your kingdom, irrespective of the size of the influence. Right. So this is how you study the nakshatras and you, know, you should know the basics of the planets then the lordship so it's very simple astrology here nothing very complex to be very honest okay. <laughs> but uh, Babaji, i have one question yeah, yeah. Uh, this uh, moon thing we have uh, just learned that it is the surroundings or the society where we are right 
but don't you think moon is uh, the relationship with yourself i mean with your own self is moon yeah definitely but the society impacts it <laughs> right that is why they used to say that do you remember when you were very small maybe young they said the story of two parrots do you remember <laughs> <laughs> i don't know at least in assam that so is there or maybe parrot or maybe some other animal but i am very sure you have heard of this that uh, there were two birds and uh, they were from the same uh, parent and after 10 years they meet each other i mean when they were very small they separated <laughs> and after 10 years they meet each other <laughs> and one parrot is very sweet speaking very nice mm-hmm. and the other one is just hurling abuse criticizing mm-hmm. insulting everybody mm-hmm. then, then one person comes and asks so why are you both no you are your brothers actually brothers or sisters mm-hmm. you are exactly the opposite Hmm. That is the upbringing or the surroundings, definitely. Yeah, that is why they say moon is the mother. Hmm. 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 The child most close to the mother, not the father. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> most of the time. Hmm. So the mother has a very uh, strong. The mother can make the child feel good or bad about his or her kingdom. As I said, moon is the feeling you get about this kingdom. <laughs> like there was one girl who once told me that uh, she had a difficult moon or a difficult fourth or something like this. Then uh, she told me that her mother used to, you know, abuse her very badly. You know, she used to beat her very much. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, it's so bad that her mother used to take her to the bathroom, and the mother used to say that you. have been now this girl with whom i was talking she uh, she had uh, saturn in the second house from moon <laughs> which means when she was born it was like a sade sati that time right <laughs> and now this mother knew about this sade sati thing <laughs> okay <laughs> and that's why you know half knowledge is more dangerous <laughs> Then she used to beat her. You know, she used to say, "Oh, you have been born into sade sati, and the day you are born, you have ruined our family. You know, my husband, mm-hmm. your father's finances have gone down. This has happened. That has happened. Mm-hmm. Now, how is the you know birth of somebody? You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. how is that going to uh, affect somebody's finances? It's so, it's so inhuman to say like that. Right. So the mother's mother's responsibility is uh, very. It's a very important role which she has to play. She shapes the conception of this world of the child because moon, as I say, is the conception of the kingdom. <laughs> apart from that, moon also represents society. That is why, if you see, if moon is in uh, is associated with the ascendant, these <laughs> people are very concerned about the society. what society thinks is good bad what society feels good how will society perceive my actions mm-hmm. it also represents the closed ones you know society not at an external level okay not that how many people you have influence on that's not the what the moon is moon will represent your closed ones mm-hmm. your close friends so if moon is badly placed or it is afflicted then your closed ones could end up giving you a lot of trouble sometimes mm-hmm. or they will hinder your growth mm-hmm. they will not let you grow sometimes mm-hmm. these are the things that i have seen with moon uh, and uh, and that impacts you very strongly so suppose you are walking on the street and somebody comes and speaks something bad to you you may not mind very much because they are strangers to you right mm-hmm. but suppose your best friend says you know oh you are a rascal mm-hmm. this to me i will never forget it you know and then you are like no no i didn't do mm-hmm. so that affects us very strongly and that is why they say you know your vibe uh, decides your tribe um, right right and they also say that the you are the summary of the five people who you associate with the closest you know? If you associate with five spiritual people, then you also become spiritual. 
Mm. If you associate five people who are drinking all the time, they are smoking, then that's what happens to you. Right. That's what I I saw in my engineering days. You know, all my friends who were in first year, nobody mm. ever touched a cigarette, never in their life. But then you have seen second year, third year, fourth year. Mm -hmm. They had ruined their lives and they had decided we will ruin yours also. Mm -hmm. And they will tell me, oh, just try it once, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so moon in short represents those people who affect you very closely. Okay, okay. What are the inputs that you take from the society? Mm -hmm. That is what the moon represents. And that is why it is very important. Mm -hmm. Sun is more of that external stuff, you know. Sun okay. is also very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope this answers your question. <laughs> yeah, it answers my question definitely. And uh, is there any sort of hierarchy or something like nakshatra of moon will uh, sort of precede the nakshatra of sun, the uh, ascendant nakshatra or something like that? Or it's not like that. It's a amalgamation of all the effects. Well, uh, that question can be answered if we know the overall chart. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for example, not astrologically, but it depends on what the person is focusing on. Okay. <laughs> Suppose somebody is making a kingdom, mm -hmm. then what, which nakshatra is important? The sun. Mm -hmm. If somebody is wanting to get a good feeling about the kingdom, then moon nakshatra. Mm -hmm. Like I get clients for consultation, and some of them say, Oh, I, I, I'm not very much interested in my money or my career or these things. I just want to be more happy and you know, more mm -hmm. So then I see moon nakshatra. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or somebody says, oh, how can I rule over the entire universe? How can I become Alexander the Great? Then you have to check Sun Nakshatra. You have to see the uh, Nakshatra of the 10th Lord or these kinds of stuff. And if somebody is always uh, wanting to know about relationships or marriage, then 7th house, 7th Lord, these are the Nakshatras that you have to see. So the answer to the question, which Nakshatra is most important, will depend on what the person is looking for. Okay, okay. At, at the first level is what he's looking for in general in life, and mm -hmm. secondly, what he's doing that dasha. Mm -hmm. Because whenever somebody comes to you, he will always run a particular dasha, right? Yeah, right, 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 right. Jupiter mm -hmm. dasha, moon dasha, Mars dasha, whatever. So, and this is how you do. Uh, this is how you know the problems. So sometimes what happens, you will see that the person maybe is more focused towards the moon nakshatra. Okay, mm -hmm. suppose. But now temporarily, by the power of dasha, what has happened? He has started focusing on his sun nakshatra very much. Mm. Right, right. And there is a point. Yeah, there is a point. Because it's like saying the person uh, wants something else, but now he's feeling that maybe I need this also now. <laughs> right. And if there are planets like Rahu influencing this, this can you know go to the other extreme. The person completely becomes something opposite of mm -hmm. who he is actually. Mm -hmm. Or if uh, planets like Jupiter is there, this could be there in a bit graceful manner. <laughs> Gracefully means th this could be there at a holistic level where the person is trying to incorporate that change of the dasha with his existing life. <laughs> but if Rahu is there, it could be like, oh, do hell with everything else. I this. Exactly. Like I, I had uh, seen the chart of some uh, person, you know, like Rahu was supposed to be 7,000. And uh, this person is generally very focused with career or something like that. But now, as I said, you know, seventh house. So now what has happened? This person has said, you know, I will do anything to marry somebody, to stay with somebody. So you know that Rahu thing. Mm. 
waiting to explain going to some end of your life where you never thought you will be. <laughs> if I have seen if the Dasha Lord is Rahu or is influenced by Rahu by aspect or by conjunction, <laughs> and that is in contradiction, not contradiction, I would say it is in a different direction from the entire horoscope, then the person suddenly becomes very extremistic. He becomes like people will say that oh i never imagined he will do something like this <laughs> he was never like this you know he was on the other side suddenly how this happened <laughs> suppose somebody has you know uh, taken a saffron dress or sanya suddenly he says i want to marry tomorrow <laughs> how or you will see somebody who is always you know focused towards relationship <laughs> love life <laughs> oh, I'm done with the relationships. I just want to focus on my career, on my health. How, how in the universe that is happening? Mm -hmm. Extremists are seen by Rahu. Right. And to be very honest, those are very difficult times, even if you are having success in that area, because ultimately, internally, you are going against yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if you are fine, internally, there is a tug of war going on. Mm -hmm. And there are many things which you have to see and analyze, and you know, you, you, the most important thing in studying the nakshatras is uh, you have to know where the flow of the horoscope is. Mm -hmm. So, for example, as you asked, which nakshatra is more important? So you have to uh, you have to know the concept of digbal here if you want to know that. Uh, Digbal means planets get directional yes. strength. Yes. So if you see that uh, there are fiery planets which are in Digbala, which means Sun and you know Mars, yes. the tenth, then you know that the Agni is very high in the person. The desire to rule over others and control and have a territory is very strong. Mm -hmm. If Jupiter Mercury is in the Bala, then you will see the desire for knowledge is very strong. Okay. Mm -hmm. so then, then you have to see how are the nakshatras of sun and moon supporting this agenda. Okay. Okay. Because see, many times you will see that people have things which are good externally, but mm -hmm. internally they are not able to decide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like for example, typical case. You know, oh, I think I love this person and I love that person also. Mm -hmm. I love two people simultaneously. Why that is happening? Mm -hmm. it, it could be that one person is fitting into the description of your horoscope, and the other is fitting into the level of the dasas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dasa is telling, go and marry this person. But the entire chart is like, no, no, this person is not good. Go, go towards that. <laughs> now it's like saying, should you stay with somebody who you like or you just want for some temporary time based on the dasha? <laughs> so, so that's how, you know, planets like Moon and Venus are in Digbala in the fourth house. So desire for comfort and emotional stability is very high. <laughs> That is why if Moon or Venus is in the 4th house, you must look at the other planet. So for example, if Moon is in the 4th, then you know that the 4th house is pulling. The desire for luxury and comfort is very high. Mm -hmm. Then you must see where Venus is. Okay, okay. If Sun is in the 10th, you must see where Mars is. Where Mars is. Mm -hmm. Because now Mars will support the tone of the Sun because their agenda is the same. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jupiter or Mercury is in ascendant, you have to see where the other planet is, even if they are not in the ascendant. Okay. Mm -hmm. That Saksara will become very important. Mm -hmm. so for example, suppose uh, Sun is in some Nakshatra, for example. Mm -hmm. Then the Nakshatra where Mars is also becomes very important. Mm -hmm. Now, Mars has a wider domain to act because he has the support of the sun. Now, what Mars says is very important <laughs> because his big brother is sitting in the throne. Indra represents the throne. Mm -hmm. 
the king. So which have not the 10th house. I'm not saying of the 10th house. 10th house is officially the house of the throne. But whenever a planet is in Digbala, he is sitting in the throne. Always remember that. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes you will see there are two planets in Digbala. Mm -hmm. You will see somebody is born in a full moon with sun in the 10th and you know moon in the 4th house. Mm -hmm. You will see that there are two kings there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there will only be one king. If there are multiple planets in Digbala, you have to see which one of them is the strongest according to the sign. Okay. Then that planet will actually sit in the throne. Okay. Okay, so for, let, let's talk with example. Somebody is a, a Pisces Lagna, for example. Mm -hmm. And that is Jupiter Venus in the ascendant. Mm -hmm. So now what you will say, oh, Jupiter is in Big Bala, this, that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, the, but the problem is Venus is also there, it is exalted. So that Jupiter in Big Bala may not be able to function very well because of Venus. Mm -hmm. so you have to also see the planets which uh, try to oppose your agenda, where they are placed. So for example, Suppose if somebody has Jupiter in the ascendant, mm -hmm. then as I said, you must also see where Mercury is. Mm -hmm. Mercury is also getting the ball there. Mm -hmm. But now you also have to see where the enemy of Jupiter is placed. Who is the enemy of Jupiter? It is Venus. Mm -hmm. What is the enemy saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is the enemy also in the ball? My God, Venus in the fourth. It's a mm -hmm. very chart. <laughs> so the best thing is just have one planet in Digbala. That's the best. <laughs> Easy to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your life will be peaceful. Either the tenth house or the first house, the seventh or the fourth. Mm -hmm. But if you have placements like you know, my God, Jupiter in first, Venus in fourth, oh, very difficult placements. Do I seek comforts, car, home, luxuries, beauty, or do I seek knowledge? Wow, very difficult. <laughs> and then you have to see where sun and moon they are placed what is the inherent disposition of the person and then you have to see what the dasha is telling, <laughs> I'm telling you honestly, when i do consultations i see that 70 percent of the times it is more because of an inner conflict <laughs> like, like even the external problems like suppose for example, uh, somebody's married life is not going good. What you will say, oh, seventh house is afflicted, you know, blah, 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 this has happened, that has happened. But seventh house will come later. First, his own chart is there, right? Mm -hmm. You have to see which planets are in big ball. That will tell you what is the inherent disposition of the person. So suppose somebody who has sun and Mars in big ball, you will see that because see, they are Agni planets. Agni is fire, right? Mm -hmm. People have a tendency to separate more from their spouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they cannot compromise. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. So then you, you may be thinking, oh, the seventh lord is well placed. Why this is happening? Mm -hmm. You are confused. Mm -hmm. Then what you will do? You will use justification. Mm -hmm. You will I know Saturn is in the fifth form there it is aspecting the seventh house that is why you are suffering mm -hmm. no, that's not the reason mm -hmm. because see the person the client will pre pretend as the perfect client mm -hmm. I have never found a man who has had marital problems will say actually you know my wife is very good actually the problem is with me only you know? <laughs> I've never found a man like this <laughs> so do not be do not believe what people now believe when I say I don't mean that they are lying. The problem is they themselves don't know that the problem is coming because of the Agni, not because of Saturn. <laughs> Rahu is expecting the seventh house. That's not the problem, sir. Mm. The problem is the Agni is very high. So you are you are like fire. Mm. Oh, he said this, enough of it. I can't stay with him. Get out of here. Mm. That is not how marriage will work. <laughs> right, right. 
no oh if jupiter is in the ascendant or something like this, you know the person is very much sometimes concerned with what is right and wrong what is good and bad so that could be problem in marriage sometimes if the chart is not supporting so uh, that is why i always say that whenever somebody asks you about certain area of their life do not directly jump to that house do not do that for god's sake mm -hmm. if somebody asking about marriage do not jump to venus no seventh house that is like a the icing on the cake what you see about relationships it is not because of the seventh house seventh mm -hmm. house is the icing on the cake it's like the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. you have to know na the iceberg and titanic was uh, titanic was going down not because of the tip you know because it hit somewhere down if you do not identify the energies which are prominent in somebody's chart then you will not be able to identify what actually is causing the problem mm -hmm. then you will see all this you know oh maybe sixth lord is in seventh seventh lord is in sixth you have seen all this in youtube seventh lord in sixth terrible marriage venus in sixth house terrible marriage mm -hmm. i get messages and mails in youtube every day oh my god my venus is in sixth house my love life is ruined mm -hmm. but before checking that have you checked what is your attitude towards love life i try or uh, uh, what is your attitude towards you know some people say sir when will i be at the top of my success pinnacle mm -hmm. of my financial success mm -hmm. career mm -hmm. but then you see that person has you know ascendant lord in the fourth house that means that person is behaving like moon and venus and you know he is just simply joking out there mm -hmm. so that my dear sir you are asking about career but that's not what you are looking for <laughs> you have a problem in your fourth house <laughs> to cover up that you are pretending that you will have some external success and you will be happy in life it doesn't work like that <laughs> oh my marriage is not working what i will do oh i will focus on my career no <laughs> end of this too you can do it temporarily for some time i have seen people doing it but ultimately you are at the same place mm -hmm. right right so you must study the whole chart and you have to know the flavor of the chart what the chart is telling what this person is all about first place <laughs> then you go on to seventh house sixth house for job seventh house for business <laughs> then somebody or somebody has a very strong fire agni mm -hmm. then the person is very difficult for him you know to uh, sometimes do business it's very difficult mm -hmm. so that person could be an entrepreneur or you know maybe maybe a politician or something like that or maybe they they can work under somebody but you tell them you know go and negotiate with this you know dealers and agents you know they will talk and they like oh, i can't do all this <laughs> so that is what that's what very interesting it is that you will see planets in certain houses giving different results mm. for example you will see somebody has venus in the 10th house and that person is interested into stuff related to venus so why is that mm. cause the chart is supporting that energy mm. so if somebody has venus in 10th you blindly suggest them oh Related to Venus, you know. <laughs> you have had it. <laughs> Then you have ruined the life of the rest of eternity. <laughs> right, right. So always follow the steps. First, check the ascendant, Lord of the ascendant. Check Sun. Check Moon. Check planets that are in the Indra. Check the planets which are in Trine. Then you go to that seventh house. Then you go to tenth house. Then you go to eighth house, eleventh house. Then you go to sixth house for job, seventh house for business. And then you will know the resolution of the nakshatra. Mm -hmm. So that is why it is very difficult task. Mm -hmm. Right, right. People don't know this. People don't know this. People think, okay, my tenth lot is in the third house. I will take up writing as a career. No, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
I have seen people with 10 slot in the card. Sportsmen, I have seen. I have seen politicians with 10 slot in the card. You will be wondering what has card house to do with 10 thousand. So that's that's very interesting to see how the planets, you know, how they change, how they alter. So that is how you, you look at the start. And then at the end, which area he's wanting to talk about. Right, right. Like for example, I have seen somebody has a very prominent six. Mm -hmm. So then they they always generally I have seen they have so many breaks in relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that maybe there's no use of getting married, you know. I always have these breakups. Mm -hmm. And now that person may ask you that when will I get a promotion in my career? But he is not actually asking about career. He is just trying to somehow fit in that void, you know, of unhappy relationships which he has by getting some external success in the career. Mm -hmm. But you may not tell the client like that, but you identify why he is talking like that. Mm -hmm. Because then you will know how to help the person. Mm -hmm. And 90% of the times, people will not admit their weaknesses. 99% of them rarely find someone who will honestly come and say, you know, actually, sir, this happened in my life, so I am like this. They will always try to cover up the shortcomings and the weaknesses, but it is your duty to identify where the problem is coming again. Right. Because whenever somebody is coming to you, he's in some trouble, right? Mm -hmm. so a healthy person will never go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. so, what the problem? Even you have to see, suppose there is a problem in the fourth house, the person doesn't feel happy. Respective yes. of external. And then suppose the person is saying that, oh, sir, my marriage is not working, should I take a divorce? Something like that. People will ask mm -hmm. you questions like this. Mm -hmm. Now you may be thinking, oh, the seventh house is bad, bad or it's afflicted. That is why he's wanting a divorce. No, that's not the reason. Then you have to tell him that even if you take a divorce and marry again, unless the fourth house is not good, you will again want a divorce from somebody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then you have to say, should you take a divorce or should you not? Mm -hmm. so blindly, if you just see, oh, anyways, you know, your Venus is in 8th house, you will have another affair or this or that. Mm -hmm. You say, and then the person ends up marrying again, and after two years, he's again back with the same question. Mm -hmm. And then you will try to fix. Okay, you know, maybe Venus is with Saturn, the most dreaded yoga in astrology, you know, Saturn, Venus conjunct. Mm -hmm. Or maybe seventh God is in the 12th house. You will try to do all these justifications. And if you fail, then the last thing is always there. He is learning Sare Sati. Put all the blames on Sare Sati. Don't see the Dasha, no need. Just see Sare Sati. So you have to identify the flavor of the horoscope. Then you know the person is internally by mm -hmm. that you know how how he views life about mm -hmm. like you want to like uh, you always have this challenge if you are spreading spirituality like many of my friends i know uh, i know one of my friend who has a very uh, strong you know uh, venus in taurus in the fourth house one of my friends mm -hmm. invite him to the for spiritual function mm -hmm. He will not ask you who is the guru who is coming to give a lecture. Mm -hmm. He will also not ask you which organization it is. Mm -hmm. He will simply ask you, Oh, that will be the one who will give a lecture in that place. He will find an air-conditioned room. Yeah. And when it's done, what will he give in the massage? If you get a little bit, then you will go. If you don't, you will not go. Why he's like that? Now he's not an atheist. <laughs> but Venus is in Big Bala, so that luxury aspect is pulling him always. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. 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 So if you do not see that, you see what is in the ninth house. Now he may have, have ninth lord exalted, debilitated. He may have great faith in God, mm-hmm. but he cannot escape that Venus in fourth house is six. So whenever I call him on some program, I tell him go there. I I make special arrangement that you know he will get. <laughs> Uh, Otherwise, he's not picking your phone the next time. He's not. <laughs> he doesn't know you. If no food, then he doesn't know you. If good food, good air condition, space, you know, good pre- PowerPoint presentation, MacBook, mm-hmm. everything is good. You know, sound system should be good. Bose. Mm-hmm. Then he's like, yeah, it was a great program. I know what how great it was. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. you ask him so like about the program oh yeah you know prasad badhiya tha guru ji bahut acche hai is very sweet you know is very nice everything is so good <laughs> and i am like you idiot which shloka did you discuss <laughs> so i can't remember <laughs> except the shloka and the lecture he remembers everything what to do and that's what the venus in the fourth house is doing But again, mm-hmm. there are many people who will have Venus in fourth. Who will not be like this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you have to see it. because that person is moon is also in, uh, moon is also in, uh, moon and Venus are in Taurus. So that fourth house energy is very strong. So it's always pulling. And even if he goes to a spiritual program, he will go in that uh, in um, in India. You have this you know, Ola or Uber. You have you know sedan <laughs> it always traveling that you will never travel in a shared uh, you know that pulling you will never go in that <laughs> always first class he will travel even if he doesn't have money he will still travel because he is very prone to luxuries <laughs> before you do a lot of analysis on how to cultivate people spiritually you know like i have seen so many people doing so much analysis are they ko kaise cultivate karenge na isko ye shlok bolenge wo bolenge but you know the whole thing is very simple right 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 any other question <laughs> Hmm. Nakshatras are pending. <laughs> yes, the the exactly what it is happening. Like I said, for example, this person had um, Venus in uh, Taurus. I said. Mm-hmm. Now, now within Taurus there are many nakshatras. You, know? you have Kritika nakshatra. You have Rohini nakshatra. Okay. You have Rikshita nakshatra. So this person, his uh, Venus, his Venus is Rohini, okay. and Rohini always likes things which look good. Right. Mm-hmm. And his moon is also in Taurus, but it is in Mrigshira. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mrigshira people, Mrigshira nakshatra. Uh, there is a tendency to be only with those people who you with whom you like. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that means the prerequisite is before going to any satsang program, he should go to a place where he feels or he likes that this is like a you know very refined place. Okay. That mm-hmm. that temple should be very clean. Otherwise, he will not go. Mm-hmm. That the fragrance should be. Very good. Mm-hmm. Feels that you know there is some bad smell which is coming out from somewhere. He will leave it immediately. Okay. <laughs> This is all Rohini stuff mm-hmm. because Rohini rules the perfume industry. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Looks, beauty, modeling, everything is Rohini. Design, beauty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> color, colors, colors are very important. Mm-hmm. Clothes. Mm-hmm. How how are people dressing in that spiritual gathering? It's very important for him. अरे यार कैसे कैसे कपड़ा पहनते हो उधर? And you tell him, you know, oh, people are very nicely dressed. You know, पूरा 
दैट शेरवानी दे शेरवानी पहन के गया है पूरा टॉप का कुर्ता एकदम ना धोती भी धोती आल्सो देन इट हैज टू बी यू नो फाइव स्टार नॉट दैट वाइट सिंपल व्हिच पीपल इन वृंदावन वेयर इट हैज टू बी एकदम शाइनिंग स्पार्कली यू नो गोल्ड पीताम्बर धोती व्हिच लॉर्ड विष्णु वेयर इट हैज टू बी लाइक दैट ओनली बोल है and his moon is in mithila so he always likes to you know meet people and you know hang, hang around with them but again they should also look good uh, smell good and be good other one he is not meeting them <laughs> and he's of, of course he's searching for a girl also and you know he's like <laughs> and i'm like all the best i hope you find one soon <laughs> so this is how the nakshatras will modify the flavor right right so nakshatras are basically they will tell you exactly what is happening the zodiac will give you a idea but the nakshatra will exactly tell you what is happening <laughs> and therefore sometimes what happens uh, you are having mahadasha of a planet Mm-hmm. and antar dasha of a planet and pratyantar pratyantar is like too small let's see mm-hmm. so sometimes what happens is like uh, suppose you have sun mahadasha and you have moon antar okay so suppose sun is in the 10th house moon is in the 4th house mm big bali opposite planets uh, opposite positions you know both are in big bali in the 10th and the 4th right now you have to see how the nakshatra energies are playing out there mm-hmm. you have to see if there is any contradiction between two nakshatras like for example pushya has a tra- tendency to forgive people okay okay and jyotishya has a tendency to punish okay mm-hmm. so now of course i mean uh, if one planet is in this uh, the other cannot be in uh, pushya seven houses because you know they are in trying to each other mm-hmm. yeah. but this is one example which i am mm-hmm. so suppose somebody has sun in jyotisha and moon in pushya then during that antardasha he will have this Con- conflict ha uh-huh. ha yeah should i punish or should i forgive <laughs> and uh, depending on the whole chart it will be decided which nakshatra will win okay mm-hmm. okay <laughs> which nakshatra will ultimately have the same? will it be uh, pushya or will it be gest <laughs> now the question is how will you decide that which nakshatra will have more say well you have to see uh, the nakshatra energies which planets they are more harmonious with which nakshatra okay okay mm-hmm. apart from those planets so for example i gave uh, the example suppose somebody has sun in jyotisha and moon in pushya for example and they are running sun padasha moon antardasha so, so then you have to see where jupiter is because jupiter is the planet which shows forgiveness in the chart mm-hmm. so if jupiter is exalted it is also in pushya or if it is in dikbal mm-hmm. or it is with the lord of the ascendant or if it is ascendant lord mm-hmm. then uh, he will behave more like a pushya and now suppose uh, like for example he has sun in jyotisha there but suppose you know like rahu is in the ascendant mm-hmm. <laughs> rahu is in the 10th house then he will not behave like pushya right he behave more like jyotisha and if mercury is also prominent with rahu then to definitely he is just definitely without a doubt mm-hmm. so that's how you will know which nakshatra is having uh, which nakshatra is actually winning the game that is how you will know that is how you decide what is ultimately going to happen to this person right right and the house where they are the house where these planets are the situations will be related to those houses as i said earlier right right okay so 
if suppose some nakshatra is there you know like for example i have seen if chitra, chitra nakshatra is there sometimes and the third lord is in chitra and venus is linked then the person li- loves to drive cars very much mm-hmm. because chitra uh, chitra and also uh, hasta nakshatra i have seen mm-hmm. but suppose the horoscope is flowing in another direction you know it's a chart of a politician for example Mm-hmm. then you cannot say that uh, you will take up driving as your profession you cannot say that he may yes. do driving as a mm-hmm. that will not be his profession even if the 10th lord is in chitra or in uh, it will not be his profession right okay so that is how you will know that which is the trait of his passion or which is his profession right right now it is very difficult to identify which is his passion which is his profession you will be confused with others. right 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 this is what i have to say right and uh, baba ji sometimes i feel when you are doing some kind of reading for a person you really need to have a dialogue with that person right to uh, to know him better his chart or her chart is definitely telling us lot many stories about that person but we need to uh, talk to him to to have a dialogue so that he can also start prompting things and we can read, uh, reach to a good conclusion that how your planetary energies and nakshatra energies are playing uh, their role in uh, his or her life am i right or wrong we cannot do a single yeah i i already made a video on you know 10 tips to get a good reading from an astrologer in that i already said that you should behave like a normal human being right like right. for example when you go to a doctor you you don't you are least knowledgeable of what he is speaking <laughs> he is seeing some number or diabetes is more or less you know some fasting pp <laughs> that i don't know what he sees Mm. but uh, so we behave like normal people he says you know go and take this tablet we are fine but when we go to astrologers we are always like oh but my sare sath is going on what will happen this will happen mm-hmm. that's what i tell people if you are so knowledgeable then you should not need to go to an astrologer right right mm-hmm. so the very fact you are going and that's the problem with youtube <laughs> there's so much mis so there's so much misinformation and the same uh, digested material is there again and again right but the problem is people think that's the truth <laughs> right right exactly for example there was a uh, there was one person who said you know oh, my daughter is recently born mm-hmm. and she has moved sagittarius mm-hmm. so how is her future going to be like Mm-hmm. so do you think it is possible to answer that question mm-hmm. just by knowing that the moon is in sagittarius my god mm-hmm. <laughs> it is like saying it is like saying tomorrow a baby is born in london mm-hmm. how will be his future <laughs> mm-hmm. anything it could be he may be the next king or queen or you know prince or he may be a criminal or he may be a great saint anything can happen Mm-hmm. so if we want to learn astrology we need to do it properly by enrolling ourselves into some courses under some senior astrologer under his guidance his or her guidance and we should do it systematically not not just by seeing digested material in mm-hmm. that that will lead us anywhere and that's what happens when i talk to clients you know they will have uh, a long list of technical questions <laughs> like for example oh my 10th lord and 6th lord are in parivartan aspected by <laughs> jupiter what will happen mm-hmm. so what i tell my clients is that forget that you know astrology just ask normal questions mm-hmm. what, what do you want in life you want a good married life a good career and good health mm-hmm. that's what you want right nothing else mm-hmm. unless you want something else <laughs> Yeah. so then just ask that what can i do in my married life so that my married life improves what can i do so that i am more in tune with my uh, inner uh, desire so that i can you know pursue a good career right 
rather than asking you know, my 10th lord is here this planet is in 10th right. house what will happen so that's where the dialogue comes into play right right because ultimately i don't care who are you you are an astrologer you are 20 years 30 years experience this is kaliyuga in kaliyuga shrimad bhagavatam it is said you know manda sumanda matayo people are not having that level of intelligence so even if you are an astrologer from 40 years 50 years you will i bet you will never understand what is going on in the chart mm. i don't know how is it it is with other professions but with astrology at least it is not like that i have not seen anybody mm -hmm. and i i don't know if you will make mistakes mistakes everybody makes doctors mm -hmm. make lawyers make astrologers mm -hmm. i'm not talking of mistakes but the lack of getting that understanding of your horoscope only because astrology is very complex mm -hmm. so 99% of the problems are solved when the client honestly tells you but then you have to cross check mm -hmm. what he is, is because as I said now if somebody is saying that my married life is bad always it could be because of the fourth house people who have a difficult fourth house you will see they have they will make statements like this you will often hear them saying mm -hmm. oh i want to be somebody who makes me happy mm -hmm. the problem is nobody will make you happy you have to make yourself happy exactly exactly mm -hmm. if your life is not having fulfilling activities which makes you fulfilled as an individual if it is very dry very boring you know not going to work right, right. A partner will not solve the problems mm -hmm. so that is why it's very important to see it holistically using nakshatras and the nakshatras will tell you okay maybe the person is not happy mm -hmm. that's fine but why the person is not happy mm -hmm. right that the nakshatra will tell you where the, the nakshatra of the fourth lord is very important okay. the nakshatra of the fourth lord will tell you how you perceive happiness in this world mm -hmm. so like for example i was telling now that <laughs> venus and moon in uh, taurus that my friend <coughs> mm -hmm. now taurus is lauded by venus so mm -hmm. venus is the fourth lord so fourth lord is in rohini mm -hmm. so everything anything which does not look good which does not feel good is not good okay. <laughs> doesn't matter who you are you are donald trump but <laughs> you are not you didn't shave up that day you are not a good person i don't like you i i don't care who you are so that, that that's what the definition of happiness is the fourth house is very important right. and sometimes i have seen people neglecting the fourth house very much mm -hmm. and the seventh house nakshatra is also very important the seventh lord that will tell you oh, what is your inherent disposition towards relationships mm -hmm. how do you perceive relationships or what why do you think is a relationship important right. Why do you think relationship is important? Or why do you think it is not important? <laughs> There's some people who will say, I don't want to get married. That, that's there in the seventh house. Why do you think you should not get married? What's the reason? Right. What is that which is under threat if you get married? life? <laughs> Why do you want to get married? What do you think that if you do not get married, what is that which you will not have in life? Right, right. That the seventh house will tell you. The seventh lord will tell you. Because that will directly aspect the ascendant. Mm -hmm. so what is that inside you which you feel is under threat if I marry or I don't marry? Mm -hmm. Your kingdom is under threat. Mm -hmm. What is that? That that the nakshatra of the seventh lord will tell. Right, exactly. Like I said, seventh lord is in Shravan and it's afflicted. Then 
um, people have this complaint that you know their spouse has this complaint oh he says things he doesn't do <laughs> he just says it in the air and it's over <laughs> Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or maybe your spouse could feel like that. If it's linked to Upapada. Mm -hmm. If it is well placed, it will be the opposite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say, you will do it. You will fulfill mm -hmm. your promises, like Bali Maharaj did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Shukracharya was not happy with that. So that means you might have to marry somebody who, who your family doesn't want. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see. I have seen Shravan Nakshatra playing out with the seventh house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I have seen uh, uh, planets like Pushya Nakshatra also playing out with the seventh house. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, these people, they, they, there's the saying, you know, you should light, enlighten others, but not by burning your own house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will burn myself so that I can give light to others. You know, charity begins at home. So it doesn't work like that. Mm. So if Pushya is linked with the seventh house and the person is a bit irresponsible, provided because Pushya is linked with the seventh house can be extraordinary. I've seen. Mm -hmm. Although they say that Pushya is not good for marriage, I agree with that. But I have seen if Pushya is linked in a good way, it can be extraordinary for your man. Mm -hmm. I mean Brihaspati had accepted uh, Tara and uh, you know Mercury, Buddha, what else do you need in life? <laughs> but yeah, if it is linked in a negative way, then uh, your spouse could be very irresponsible. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's also very important. You have to know which flavor of the which story of the nakshatra, which flavor is coming out in a prominent way. Okay. Because the nakshatras will have so many stories, you will be confused. Mm -hmm. So, you have to know which story is exactly happening in my case. Right. Mm -hmm. And is that happening in a good way or a bad way? Like, for example, they say Gesta is a difficult nakshatra, but for competition, it is very good. So, it's not a bad nakshatra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are planning to give some competitive exam or you know something like that, it's very good. Right, right. That is because that the good part of that nakshatra is coming out. Okay. But but trying to pull others down, mm -hmm. trying to uh, steal the things of others. Right. That right. is. Right. So the overall chart will tell, uh, in general, uh, which flavors come out more. Like for example, Ardhra nakshatra, they say. Mm -hmm. Ardhra is sometimes very destructive. I have seen. Mm -hmm. Ardhra has a tendency to give shocks. Mm -hmm. And whenever moon transits Ardhra nakshatra, I have always seen tomorrow it is going to transit. Mm -hmm. All the other shocking news you will always get at some level. Mm -hmm. Now, shocking news can be good or bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like last year, March, when Moon was transiting in Ardhra, I got a news. <laughs> I did not get sleep the whole day. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was such a bomb lasting news, you know. I was just thinking whole night if this actually happens, you know, I will be in the heavens. And that excitement, I did not get sleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the same Ardhra Nakshatra, one day I was uh, last year in September when I went to Indra, uh, India, I was there in uh, Prayagraj. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That day also moon was in Ardhra and I was like, something is definitely going to happen here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went in that boat and you know, that person was, you know, driving that boat man. he was drunk. That that I came to know after <laughs> we had reached the mid waters, you know, that he's drunk. <laughs> he started revealing you know, in her, uh, the activity which he was doing last night, and then I was like, My God, <laughs> I was thinking maybe you know, God has decided that I will give up this life in a holy place. <laughs> 
God is very merciful to choose and you know Prayagraj for me to leave this body. <laughs> right, right. That whole trip I was in, you know, it was like a haunted trip for me of you know, Prayagraj, and I was like. <laughs> I will come next time. I am definitely not getting in this boat the next time. <laughs> Everything else is fine. I will offer prayers from here only. I will not go to that, you know, Sangha. I don't want. <laughs> in the name of Sangha, I will lose my life only. <laughs> I am not doing it the next time. So it was very electrifying. But that that was because you know there were some uh, other transits which were you know not very good for me at that time. Okay. But when it happened in March, I got an electrifying news. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was a very good news. So you cannot just say that the nakshatra is good or bad, which people do these days. <laughs> every nakshatra has good things and almost every nakshatra has negative things, challenges I would say. <laughs> always remember that if the chart is strong it is good and in general I have seen mm -hmm. the good side of the nakshatras come out in general I have seen okay 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 99% of the time okay like uh, you take the example of Aslesha mm -hmm. Aslesha they will say oh it's a very dreaded nakshatra you know sarpa snakes you know these people are envious they are jealous Blah blah blah, they will say. <laughs> but I have seen Ashlesha when lived in a good way. These people are the greatest of the great uh, innovators, scientists. I have seen. <laughs> think in a way which you can never think. <laughs> Many entrepreneurs will have Ashlesha very prominent. Okay, okay. But they don't have Ashlesha prominent, they have Ashlesha prominent in a good way. Okay, okay. Otherwise, I have also seen the other side, always gossiping, 24 hours. He did this, he did that. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> so, whatever the whole chart says, the nakshatras also speak in that tone I have seen. Okay. okay. And you also have to know uh, at a conclusive level, you know, what is the... Uh, like for the story, as I said, you know, just learning some petty lessons, it, this is good, bad, it doesn't work like that. You have to learn the lessons at a higher philosophical level, spiritually. <laughs> like for Jeshtha Nakshatra, they say Indra and Vritrasur had a fight. <laughs> and then when uh, Indra wants to kill Vritrasur, he is unable to do it because Vritrasur is so huge. Okay. Then mm -hmm. they go to Dadichi and Vishnu tells them, you know, go and tell Dadichi that give his bones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dadichi gives a bone, his bones by which Indra makes a thunderbolt, the Vajra, and by that he hits Vitrasur and Vitrasur dies. Mm -hmm. But that is not what it is. The important thing is after Vitrasur dies, what happens? He obtains moksha and he goes back to the spiritual world. Because Vritrasur is actually Chitra Kritu Maharaj. He is not a demon. Okay. Mm -hmm. He is a great, great soul who was cursed by Mother Parvati because of some reason. So, the lesson of this is like this that the, you, uh, as they say, na, operation is successful, but the patient is dead. Mm -hmm. You have. Uh, they say that you have won the battle but you lost the war, something like that. Mm -hmm. And this is what Vitrasur says exactly to Indra. Okay. <laughs> he says, Indra, please kill me as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I will be liberated from this hellish existence of the material world. Because I will go back to the spiritual world. And you will sit here ruling this heavenly kingdom and you will die one day. Mm -hmm. so who has won the battle? It is, is it you or is it me? Mm -hmm. So sometimes when Jeshtha people I have seen, they become too much caught up with winning mm -hmm. because of which they forget why they were fighting firstly. <laughs> mm -hmm. You started the battle because of something else and at the end it becomes something else. Mm -hmm. 
and pushya people i have seen sometimes you know they 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 pretend that you know they are very good sometimes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they are not that great sometimes mm-hmm. <laughs> but because it's a very uh, soft nakshatra you you don't come to know about it you know but you you need to see if that's happening actually yeah you want to ask something okay now recording again uh main discussion point was nakshatra only how to i mean uh, put in place how to do the prediction at the end or reach to a conclusion as, as you said it should not be like only one nakshatra you see and just uh, conclude no, no, no. it's not like that yeah it would be very great if it was but <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then we would put people into twenty-seven categories in this world. Okay, he's mm-hmm. like this, she's like that. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that, right? Right, right. Yeah. So the conclusion is very simple. You know, you should read the stories, and you should also read about every nakshatra. You mm-hmm. should know, and you try to see how that is affecting in your life without seeing the planets. Okay. and then later on you see to what extent your analysis is correct right. with respect to astrology and the planets okay right and right. then you see what the dasha planets are saying because you are always under some dasha right the dasha planets are saying uh, in the tone of the horoscope or they are you know kind of opposing mm mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. that will help you identify where the problem is coming from mm 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 do they will show internal con- conflicts like people ask na oh i don't want to do job i want to do business what should mm. i do you know that is a internal conflict between them their own self right 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 we, now because of that what happens if they don't want to do job then they are doing job they are doing it half heartedly mm. mm. yes and they want to do business but suppose there is some planet which is saying no no i'll pull you towards job okay then what will happen your friends family they will say oh how can you take risk now you are old you have responsibility don't do business continue your job so mm-hmm. there you see where the problem is coming from mm-hmm. now you don't know where the problem is so then you suggest accordingly then you can suggest remedies for planets for um the nakshatras you know blindly you cannot just suggest remedies mm-hmm. seventh lord is there, so do this mantra it doesn't work like that <laughs> and you must see the nakshatras right right very important <laughs> right right exactly and that is why i spoke about the vedas and the upanishads mm-hmm. earlier because they will uh, so you will know if a particular nakshatra story is linked to the vedas what is the aim of that nakshatra right right mm-hmm. it is material prosperity material oh, stuff yes. Mm-hmm. and if it is linked to the upanishads it is like for mm-hmm. example jyotisha nakshatra the conclusion is there in the shrimad bhagavatam mm-hmm. that krasho went back to the spiritual lord that's like the highest conclusion mm-hmm. that, that's one example you have to know from where it is coming and then you have to know why it is coming from there why not from there right mm-hmm. okay then you will know what is the ultimate lesson of the nakshatra just the knowing the stories will not help you much okay 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 you have to have a holistic picture of the uh, scriptures that is very important right and then you maybe hopefully you know one day what is happening <laughs> <laughs> hopefully yeah yeah <laughs> mm. that's the summary and that's the conclusion right right okay anything else uh that's it baba ji i just wanted to connect with you once and uh, wanted to talk on nakshatras because this is really an elaborate chapter many books on this many videos on this but um, getting to hear from you is uh, given me a different thing this vedas thing and upanishad thing it's a new thing i have not learned uh, read in any book uh, so far and i've not uh, sort of uh, here on the uh, youtube channel as well because from mm-hmm. this you will never hear also uh huh <laughs> okay <laughs> right. stories related stories related to nakshatras and further it is related one more thing i forgot to say 
one small thing i forgot to say is sometimes you will see the same stories are there in two two different scriptures okay the same story, but the conclusion is different uh -huh. okay that that becomes again more confusing for a new learner right yeah then it depends what your purpose is <laughs> for example uh, if you read uh, the mahabharat because the mahabharat talks of dharma artha kama moksha not too much spirituality at a higher level ultimately talks about that but not directly mm -hmm. so the conclusion of the mahabharat is you know that the pandavas you know they went to heaven and you know krishna mm -hmm. was also there they had a good time there mm -hmm. but if you come to shrimad bhagavatam which is the highest of the scriptures you know okay. conclusion wise Mm -hmm. That says the Pandavas, you know, do hell with all this hell, uh, hell and heaven. They they didn't go there. They directly went back to Vaikuntha, to the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same is with if you study Mahabharat, who is Bhishma there? He is one of the very prime central characters. He is like a Chhatriya. He is a warrior there. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> he is a celibate. He is a Brahmachari who did not marry. He is a very powerful personality. But if you see the Srimad Bhagavatam, he is totally somebody different. He is one of the 12 Mahajans. He is a great personality. He is one of the authorities of spiritual knowledge. Like Yamaraj, for example, he is like a person in the Vedas and Upanishads. Who is he? One who takes life, right? Yamaraj. Mm -hmm. But when you read Bhagavatam, he is totally different. He is one of the 12 Mahajans. In fact, he is the one who speaks about the 12 Mahajans. He speaks about 11 and then he says to the Yamadutas, these 11, uh, we we are the authority. That means he's including himself also in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is a totally different person. He has nothing to do with life and death. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, so you should know the Srimad Bhagavatam. You should read it. That is very, 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 very important. Because you will see many stories. Which you will find in Ramayana, Puran, Mahabharat, Ved, Upanishad, so many places. Also, you will find it in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But the conclusion is different. <laughs> the story is the same, but the conclusion it makes all the difference. Okay. <laughs> like you take an example of uh, Kunti, for example. Kunti in the Mahabharat is who she is, you know, she's a lady who has struggled very much, you know, through all the ups and downs in life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But in the Srimad Bhagavatam, she is somebody else totally. There is no mention of her sons. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, okay. Kunti's, Kunti's prayers for Lord Krishna, they are there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. So there she is a greatly elevated spiritual lady. She is giving big, big prayers to Krishna there. And in the Mahabharata, she is you know, dealing with all this politics. <laughs> <laughs> the same characters will have a different focus in different stories. Right, right, right. Sorry, not stories in the different scriptures, depending on the level. Now, Vyasdev wrote all the scriptures, mm -hmm. Ramayana, Mahabharata, everything he wrote, and he was not happy at the end. Mm -hmm. And he wrote the Srimad Bhagavatam when his guru Narad Muni came and said, You have done a big mistake. Mm -hmm. so in the Srimad Bhagavatam, you will find the same, some of the existing stories from these earlier books mm -hmm. at a much more evolved level, you will find it. Okay, okay. So you must read and you should know the stories from there. Then you know what is the ultimate purpose of the story, not just at a superficial level, you know, like I got it. Mm -hmm. Take the example of Shravan, Bali Maharaj, what he did. Mm -hmm. If you read other Vedas, Puranas, you will see, oh Bali Maharaj, you know, this thing happened and later on he got something and it was nice. But no, Bhagavatam doesn't say like that. In Bhagavatam, Bali is one of the twelve Mahajans. Okay, okay. Grandfather is also a Mahajan, Pralad Maharaj. Right. He himself, although he is born in a demoniac family, he is Asura actually, you know, by birth. <laughs> mm. But he is one of the 12 Mahajans. Mm. And later on, what happens? He goes to Sutala planet, which is below uh, the earthly realm, which is an underwater heavenly planet, which is even more beautiful than Indra's uh, heavenly realms. And Vamandev, Vamandev, the avatar of Vishnu says, I will stay at Sutala as your doorkeeper, as your bodyguard. <laughs> so that's the lesson that when you give something to God, Bali Maharaj, what he did, he gave to God whatever he had. 
He surrendered everything, right? Even Shukracharya said, "Don't give this is Vishnu. He will strip you from everything. He will make you a beggar. Don't give anything." <laughs> but he still gave. Then later on, he got something which he would have never achieved. So right. the lesson of Kaman is that by giving to God, he will never lose. Right. He will only give more. So sometimes people say, "Oh, you know, I cannot donate ten percent of my money. It's too much." You know? <laughs> So that's the thing, you know. God doesn't see how much you give; He sees how much you keep back. <laughs> right. So that that ultimate conclusion we will find in the Shrimad Bhagavatam. So if somebody wants to know Nakshatras, then they must study the Shrimad Bhagavatam. If you do not study the other literatures, it's fine. That's not a big problem. Okay. But you must study. There, all these things are there. Jeshta Nakshatra is in detail. You know, eighth canto, seventh canto, sixth canto. It is there. Okay. Otherwise, you just learn nakshatras, you know, individually. This is this, this, this is this. You will not understand the holistic picture. Okay. And you will also not understand how one nakshatra translates to the other. Mm -hmm. After Indra did those wrong things, what happened? How he did penance? That is where Mula nakshatra comes. Okay. Urvashada, which is after Mula, he was doing tapasya. Mm -hmm. Urvashada, he got back certain things. Okay, okay. You will not understand what is all this. You must read the Srimad Bhagavatam. Only then you will understand. Right, right. So conclusion is just read the Srimad Bhagavatam. That's the conclusion. Mm -hmm. You will understand. Right. That is all. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, let's wind up here then. And uh, okay. Babaji, it has given me immense pleasure, you know, recording with you. Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> definitely. I was. Uh, it was never in my dreams that I'll be talking to a person like you. Really. <laughs> right. My pleasure. I'm very happy that uh, you. Uh, told that you want my video to be the first video in the channel so <laughs> right, right right okay let's see okay. how this journey goes ahead i will stop the recording then